grandfather. So Phil's been very kind, calling me the uh, the father. Thank you, Philip. So I'm very proud to be up here to show that we now have uh, well over 500 uh, orders, uh, which many of you have been involved in the program uh, since the beginning. And as you know, uh, we were very confident that we would uh, be able to serve the market well, but especially with the Airbus partnership has been a really great boost uh, uh, for the program. And having 135 sales this year, of course, a record, uh, record year for us. I'm extremely proud of um, showing the, this chart with uh, JetBlue, of course, was a great win uh, for the program. And this really further endorses the capability of, uh, of the aircraft and what it can do uh, in their network. Uh, so a really great, uh, great addition to the A220 program. Um, really just want to go through quickly, most of you are aware of the product, so uh, I just want to go through, of course, what the A220 brings to the market is it introduces the latest technology uh, to this segment. And of course, um, what it does together when you combine all the advanced materials, the latest aerodynamics, of course, the, the latest engine, um, with the uh, most advanced, but again, reliable uh, systems that are most efficient on the market. And of course, the, um, the AHMS is the Advanced Health Monitoring System. It is the most advanced health monitoring system uh, in the industry. And um, actually combining with all the Airbus capability in terms of their uh, predictive analysis, um, it's really a great combination. Um, of course, it uh, has greater than 20% fuel burn advantage against existing aircraft and against the latest aircraft in the segment were uh, more than, uh, well, double digit, uh, more than 10% uh, advantage, which is uh, fantastic. The other thing I'd like to mention is the technology is working extremely well in service. I'll talk a little bit later. Of course, when you develop technology, of course, there's always uh, a risk in terms of how reliable it is, how it performs in service. And I'm happy to say um, that it's uh, performing uh, actually very, very well. Um, Kevin, the other great feature of the, ca of the aircraft, of course, so the, you know, all the technology, it brings uh, the payload range, the performance, and also uh, the operating economics, which of course is the bottom line for the customers. Um, but really uh, combined with uh, really an outstanding cabin, and basically it's a wide body feel in a single aisle, the first time that it's been done. And uh, so we have basically, these are some of the, the key features. Uh, so we did the sidewalls, um, because technology, we're not limited to, uh, let's say, uh, manufacturing constraints. So we're able to make it wider, and we designed the uh, cabin basically from the inside out. What does that mean? Really, we looked at the passenger space, the size of passengers, me, for example. <laughs> I fit in there very comfortably. So when you sit on the A220, how many people have flown an A220 here? Cool. Did you fit? I just said yes. That's good. Good benchmark for me. Um, so basically, the thing, too, is on the baggage, uh, to be able to have one bag uh, per passenger. And basically, uh, that's key because it allows, of course, faster turnaround times. And uh, one of the key features we didn't realize, it actually makes the cabin crew much happier because they don't have to deal with the bags and uh, with uh, re reshuffling of, uh, of people in the cabin. Uh, the other thing, too, is we made sure we had a lot of headspace. We wanted to give an open environment to the cabin. And, of course, we um, put the largest uh, windows in the uh, single aisle market. Again, that was feedback, listening to our customers, what they want to see inside the cabin. Of course, everyone is really concerned about the environment. So um, being able to look at it and appreciate it was, uh, and bringing, of course, a lot of natural light into uh, the cabin. Um, widest seats are actually um, 18 and a half uh, seats, plus the middle one is actually at 19 inches, so a lot of space in there. Uh, wide aisle, of course, important. Two things for the wide aisle. One is for the, the boarding and onboarding, of course, and the other thing is during servicing, you can actually pass uh, during uh, in flight, which is critical to not create any traffic or not interrupt the servicing in, uh, uh, in service. And of course, uh, in the dual class, we uh, offer, of course, uh, wide uh, business class seats. So this is the latest view of our um, first North American customer. This is with Delta Airlines. They did, a, uh, with our teams, of course, a fantastic job of the cabin. Uh, really the latest technology in terms of uh, connectivity and also, uh, as you can see, all the IFE is on there. So essentially, it's a go-go system. 
um, and with Hadashi screens, and all the content is wireless on board. First time that's done in the industry. And the GoGo system was installed here um, uh, in line fit. So usually this is done after delivery and the airline has to go and modify the aircraft. We actually did it as part of development and we do it as part of our uh, final line assembly. And why that's important is it um, basically, you know, tearing the aircraft back apart to install that later. Of course, uh, two things, it's a lot of non-value added work, but also the aircraft, once it's delivered, has to be out of service for that period of time to do it. So it's a natural thing to do it and we were the first to do it in the, uh, in the industry. <coughs> Um, so in service now, I'll talk about how it's going. So we have uh, 57 aircraft delivered, uh, now five operators. As you know, the latest two was uh, Delta Airlines that took their deliveries um, last year, and so did Air Tanzania. And again, you can see uh, some of the statistics, 120,000 um, flight hours and building, and uh, high utilization of the aircraft. So we have in uh, some cases with uh, Korean Airlines and uh, also with Air Baltic up to 18 hours uh, per day, which is really exceptional for an aircraft of this category. Even for a wide body long haul, this would be a benchmark number. And then you see on uh, the short, um, basically Swiss and also Cal do shorter flights typically and are doing uh, in some cases up to 13 legs per day, which is uh, also an outstanding number. So very, uh, there's still a lot, of course, of support we do and combined with Airbus, which is a great partnership for us. Uh, we're very satisfied. Uh, how it's going in, the, in service. And we have very good feedback from the customers, not only about the cabin comfort, the fuel burn, um, the payload range performance is um, it's great after you know, the development to have this positive feedback uh, from, the, from the market. The visual on the uh, routes that you can see. So you can see, um, this is one of the advantages that the A220 uh, brings. It has uh, exceptional field performance, so we can operate out of London City. It has long range. I can fly uh, currently uh, Air Baltic's flying uh, up to six and a half hours. They go from Riga to Abu Dhabi. Uh, but the aircraft has a range of about seven and a half hours. Um, so that's uh, really flexible. So what it, why it's important for customers, allows them the flexibility to operate wherever they want. So if they have a very challenging airport to operate from, <coughs> or if they have a long range they want to do, or if they want to do very short flights with fast turnarounds, the aircraft was designed uh, to do that. So you can see today 170 uh, routes, 130 destinations, and it's great to start seeing a 220 footprint, uh, starting to have a good footprint globally around the, around the world. Uh, very proud, of first African uh, customer, so Air Tanzania took delivery in December. Uh, they already started in service, and that's uh, great to see the aircraft now positioned in Africa. And it's a good uh, foothold for us to grow uh, the fleet and uh, also the uh, um, uh, the region. Breaking news, we uh, certified ETOPS, so adding again further capability uh, to the aircraft. Uh, so of course it's 180 minutes, again which is exceptional for aircraft of this uh, category and class. Again uh, providing more flexibility, so allows them basically to do unconstrained routes on uh, any uh, overwater uh, routes that they would like to uh, conduct. So again, uh, great work of the team that was actually uh, completed uh, at the end of last year. We decided to, uh, to announce it today, having all of you here uh, with us in, uh, in Mirabel. Uh, some of the stats you can see. Um, so the range of the E220, 3,200 nautical miles. 20% uh, again was the existing fleet, and it's 11% uh, against the latest aircraft in the industry. And you can see basically the maintenance cost, which I'm going to talk about, a 25% advantage on the maintenance cost. I'm going to talk about some of those details in the upcoming slides. So making a great aircraft even, uh, even better. So on the maintenance side, and this is important, and of course maintenance doesn't typically get a lot of uh, publicity. It's kind of done behind the scenes, it's not visible. So basically a key feature of E220 is <coughs> there are no daily checks, which is first in the industry. And how does that happen? We have Basically, it's only on indication. So we have larger uh, oil reservoirs on the engines. Uh, we have a tire pressure indication system. Uh, so basically, the aircraft can operate typically about 10 days with no checks. So that's a huge savings and, of course, a big efficiency for the operators. 
Uh, the HX, uh, they were um, designed and, um, and certified for 850 hours. Again, that's a very large number for a new aircraft. And essentially, we've done now 135, a little more, 135 HX with no findings, which again is a great indicator in terms of the maturity of the aircraft. And the first sea check, uh, which is uh, really planned at 8,500 hours, is actually in progress as we uh, sit here today. And uh, so far, uh, that's progressing really well. So all I have to say is uh, basically it's performing exceptionally well on the maintenance side as well. And of course, that means less uh, downtime, but of course, the bottom line is less cost. Um, so I just want to show a quick uh, slide. And this is one of the advantages of the partnership with Airbus. They have a huge footprint globally around the world, which, of course, we're leveraging now, which is uh, fantastic. Uh, there's like 62 uh, locations worldwide. You can kind of see the breakdown of, the, of those sites. And uh, again, you know, some of the conversations that really help now with customers, uh, basically knowing that Airbus is there with that uh, worldwide footprint network is extremely helpful in, uh, in giving them confidence about the in-service support that they're going to get from us. Um, had a great year last year, as uh, Philip mentioned. Uh, we delivered 33 aircraft under the leadership of Florent. And uh, also we sold 135 aircraft. So on the delivery side, we essentially doubled deliveries from the previous year where we delivered 17. And the uh, largest uh, sales so far ever on the, on the program. A couple of other uh, key features. So the Autoland uh, Cat 3 was also certified and put in service. Uh, we finished all the fatigue testing, was completed, uh, 180,000 cycles. Uh, ETOPS was just approved, that was the most recent uh, actually achievement on the program. And I don't know if you can see, we delivered, of course, the first Delta aircraft and the uh, first uh, Tanzania. Uh, we're going to continue developing the product and keeping it uh, basically uh, very competitive. Uh, we're working on adding uh, seats uh, with the uh, overwing uh, modification, which is in testing. And also we're going to introduce a dual aft lab, which is behind the uh, rear doors, which will uh, allow basically more seats in certain configurations. Uh, 2019, um, we continue to ramp up and we have three new operators. Um, before you ask, they're not public. Uh, there is one, of course, that is public, Air Canada, and we'll have actually a spokesman from Air Canada here this afternoon that will come uh, give us an update on their fleet plans with the A220 and what that means here in, in Canada. And of course we have uh, many new operators in 2020 with all the new sales that we have. So I think personally I'm uh, really happy with the partnership and uh, we are on a great trajectory now. And you know, for me personally, after all the hard work of developing the program to really have the partnership with Airbus and the great future for us is, uh, is outstanding. That's it for my section. I'm going to pass over to Florent, who's going to talk uh, about the uh, rest of the program.